everybody! Before I get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone for checking out my new Skillshare class. Last week, I released my second class on Skillshare all about how to plan a proper book release. If you haven't taken it yet, you totally should. I've received so many amazing messages about it, and I'm really excited you guys are loving the class. I worked super hard on it. As a thank you for your support, I'm holding a giveaway! One lucky winner is going to receive a signed hardback of the Savior's Champion. Entering is super easy. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel and leave a comment down below. If you want a bonus entry, ring that notification bell and make sure you mention in your comment that you are a part of the notification squad, which is basically the best squad ever. I will announce the winner in next week's video, so be sure to tune in and be sure to check out my Skillshare class. On to the topic, today's video was requested by one of my glorious patrons from over on Patreon, Fiona. Fiona is a paranormal fiction writer as well as a total sweetheart. Seriously, this woman is a delight. She wanted to know all about my personal reading preferences, so per her request, I am listing the top 10 things I look for when picking out my next read. Quick disclaimer, all the items I'm about to list must be written well in order for me to enjoy them. Obviously. If the book isn't good, it doesn't matter if it has any of these qualities. It's like spraying perfume on dog shit. Still dog shit. Anywho, you guys know that I am partial to fantasy and sci-fi, however, I read all kinds of genres and take all sorts of recommendations, and these 10 things will make me much more inclined to pick up a book. Number 1. Death. We're starting with the good stuff. To be clear, a lot of writers, especially newbie writers, think that killing off characters is edgy and cool. But killing off characters has been around for a long time. It's pretty regular. And killing off characters just to be edgy isn't appealing. Every action in a novel requires a purpose, including the death of a character. So when a writer tells me, you'll love this book, people die, it doesn't really mean anything to me. What I like are novels that have overall darker themes or symbology around death. I like stories that study suffering. I like stories that dissect the afterlife or lack thereof. I like the macabre. Regardless of whether or not characters actually die, a dark or deadly atmosphere is really appealing to me. Number two, healthy romance. No one should be surprised by this. I can certainly enjoy a book that doesn't feature romance, but it is not going to be a favorite. I prefer stories where the plot is half action adventure, half romance, which is why I write in this format. That said, books with this setup are few and far between, so I'll settle for reading an adventure with a romantic subplot. Unfortunately, you can't just say, I want a book with a romantic subplot, because someone is going to recommend some creepy abusive stalker crap and call it a love story. I don't want to read about fairies sexually assaulting each other. Please stop recommending these books to me. If I'm gonna get invested in a love story, it has to be a healthy one. The couple should like one another. They should respect each other. There should be consent. This is the bare minimum necessities for a healthy relationship, and the fact that it's so rare in fiction that I have to clarify all this is depressing. Number three, a happy ending. Look, I get that while reading, for instance, a horror novel, you should probably expect a grim ending but that's why I don't read horror novels. I read to escape and to feel good, and while I love violence in books, I want to walk away feeling satisfied. I want to feel like all the struggle the characters went through was worth it in the end. And there are some genres where a happily ever after is quite literally a genre requirement. If you're writing a romance where the couple dies at the end, that's not a romance, that's a tragedy label it appropriately. Lots of people like depressing endings, and that's fine. I'm just not one of them. Life is already depressing enough. I'm not trying to willingly make myself feel shitty. Number four, high stakes. I really struggle to get into stories where it feels like there's nothing substantial to lose. Will she get the job? Will he find himself? Will I give a shit? If I wanted to spend hours discussing job promotions or a new crush, I could just talk to my friends. I read books to enter different worlds, to survive battles or protect kingdoms. I want to be on the edge of my seat, damn it. That's not to say that there shouldn't be smaller stakes in the mix for a sense of normalcy, but at the end of the day, I'm not here for normal. And as someone whose fiance literally almost died, I struggle to care about dilemmas that seem relatively minor. We all have different definitions of hardship, and you're entitled to your own. 
but my bar is set very high. Number five, smart women. A lot of fictional chicks are stupid. They're either written for the male gaze, or they're written for some kind of damsel in distress wish fulfillment, or they're just written by a stupid author. I really enjoy stories that feature intelligent women. Women who think for themselves, who have opinions, who make decisions. That's not to say they don't fuck up every once in a while, because they should fuck up. Everyone does. I'm just not gonna waste my time with a book that has me constantly thinking, if she only had a brain. Number six, nice men. I'm really tired of reading about arrogant pieces of shit. If the character is written by a heterosexual male, he's an arrogant piece of shit because it's cool. If the character is written by a heterosexual female, he's an arrogant piece of shit because it's sexy. I'd argue that if you think arrogance is cool, you might love yourself a little too much, and if you think arrogance is sexy, you probably hate yourself a little too much. If a book features a nice, respectful, well-adjusted leading man who doesn't have an eggshell ego, I'm interested, I'm intrigued, I want to know more. It's kind of sad the bar is so low that a nice male character feels like an anomaly, but the world is trash, so what can you do? Number seven, adults. A lot of people are gonna get their panties in a twist over this, so let me make one thing clear. I am not coming for the young adult category. No one is. Young adult literally dominates the industry right now. I also have nothing against teenagers. I was a teenager myself once. It sucked. But that's actually my point. I didn't like being a teenager when I was a teenager. I didn't like the drama, I didn't like the inexperience, I didn't like the hormones, and I don't like it anymore now that I'm an adult. I just prefer reading about grown-ups. I can relate to them better. It's not that deep. I also enjoy saucy content every once in a while, and I feel really fucking creepy when I have to read a sex scene between teenagers. Ugh. Which brings me to number eight, adult content. Honestly, this one comes down to realism. If a book features adults, adult shit is gonna happen. If the stakes are high, shit's gonna get messy. People fight, they have sex, they die, they curse. And sterilizing your novel of all this just makes it feel fake. Even if you don't cuss, you can't honestly tell me that most people would have a clean reaction to, say, murder. Someone is chasing you with a knife and you yell, oh fiddlesticks! Darn it, not again! I just want to believe your characters, that's all. Number nine, diversity. This is not so much something I seek out in my reading material, it's just that when a novel lacks diversity, I notice it in a very negative way. The real world is a mix of sexualities, body types, skin tones, gender expressions, abilities, disabilities, mental capacities, I could go on. If a book only features one type of person and there's no plot specific reason for it, that is going to serve as a negative distraction because it is not remotely realistic. Even if the world is completely fictional, a homogenous society needs to serve some kind of intention because advanced species are almost never a monolith. Unless the author is shooting for diversity kudo points and failing miserably, a diverse cast usually means a realistic, interesting, unique, and memorable cast of characters. And that's what I'm here for. And lastly, number 10, dark hair. This is a weird one, but hear me out. Growing up, whenever I read books, the leading lady was always a white girl with blonde or red hair. This trend was noticeable enough that when I finally read a book where the leading lady had dark hair, it instantly became my favorite because she was the only brunette I'd ever read about. Most of the time when a female character was introduced as having dark hair, she was either really ugly or the villain. Of course she was. Because of this, if a leading lady has brown or black hair, I am instantly excited. I've got nothing against lighter hair, my man has it, I'm a fan, but when it comes to fictional ladies, I prefer the dark side. So there you have it, those are the 10 things that I look for in books. If you recommend a novel to me and it has any of this stuff, I hear you, I see you, and I want to read all the things. A huge thank you to Fiona for requesting this topic and for supporting me over on Patreon. If you'd like the chance to have a video dedicated to you, or if you want access to tons of other rewards, check me out on Patreon. We've got an exclusive writing group over on Discord. Patrons get early access to my videos. You can even get a critique from me. We have a good time. Don't forget I am holding a giveaway in honor of the recent launch of my Skillshare class, 
One lucky winner is going to walk away with a signed hardback of the Savior's Champion. You got one week to enter. All you have to do is subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Bonus points if you ring that bell. And be sure to follow me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook, and of course you can tweet me at Jenna Moresi. Bye!